Chapter 34. Subject Captain Young Species. Human Description. Mammalian Humanoid No Tail. 6. 2 inches 1.87 m AVG height. 185 pounds 84 kilograms AVG weight. 170 year life expectancy. Ship. USS. Liberty Location. Alpha Centauri. Last night I had received word that the fleets had finished mustering, so I woke up extra early just in case we got orders to jump. We did not. Instead, we were told to wait and not told why. There'd been no word of another assault on Seoul. There'd been no word of another fleet joining us. We were seemingly sitting on our asses for no good reason. The uneducated may believe this to be a good thing. Time for rest is always a blessing, they think. Those with experience know otherwise. Time for rest means there's nothing to do, and nothing to do in a war can be a very bad thing. It could mean that the enemy has successfully hidden themselves and are building up their strength to hit you when you least expect it. It could mean that your commanders are getting cold feet. It could mean a ceasefire. Or, and this is most likely the case in this particular situation, it could mean that something very wrong has happened very far up the chain. A glance at my bridge crew told me they were thinking the same thing. A shaking leg, a ring being played with, hands in the ready position but eyes staring into the middle distance. They're nervous, and as far as I'm concerned, they've got reason to be. An unexpected rest is bad luck. A chime from my comms terminal almost made me jump. Two, Captain Young. From Omega Enclosed is a software patch for your FTLD. Apply immediately. Vertical bar attachment, FTLDV 93198933. X, Johnson, I'm sending you a software patch for the FTLD. Apply it, I ordered. Aye, aye, sir, Navigation Officer Lieutenant Johnson replied. My XO, Commander Ying, turned to me and asked, What's the patch for, sir? The stars have not seen fit to provide me with an explanation, I responded, referring to the Admiralty. Neither has the damned AI. Apologies, Captain Young, my intercom said with Omega's voice. I'm a tad busy. The patch negates the effect of the Omni-Union warp disruptors. A few seconds of stunned silence passed. This was huge news. We'll be able to dance circles around the robotic fucks. Speaking of robotic fucks. Understood. Thank you, Omega. A bit of feedback for future reference, though. It is much easier to include that information in the communication than it is to provide it verbally, I replied as another chime came from my comms terminal. To Captain Young, from Omega. The software patch negates the effect of the Omni-Union warp disruptors. Yes, I figured that out after the first 100 inquiries. You can go ahead and ignore that message, Captain, the AI said with a remarkable amount of sarcasm. Patch is done, Captain, Johnson said. Excellent. Prepare for warp. Await my mark. Now all we've got to do is wait for the rest of the ships to upload the patch. Or install the patch. Whatever it is. The nervous silence once again settled over the bridge. Another unexpected rest. Bad luck. I tried to find something to do other than watch the comms terminal. A watched pot never boils after all. No joy, I'd already been through my mail and messages. There wasn't anything else to pay attention to either. I caught myself watching the terminal as it chimed again and flashed the two words no captain enjoys reading. Priority one. Recipients. Captain Young, Captain Trex, Captain Raymond, Captain Williams, Captain Yordanescu, Captain Hollivander. The USSS Liberty has been selected to test the efficacy of the faster-than-light drive update that should allow us to warp within the disruption fields that the Omni Union generate. The team will be comprised of USSS Liberty, USS Idaho, USSS Aniniak, USSS Tokyo, USSS Malice, USS Rosgath. Once we arrive at the rendezvous point, the test team will warp into the enemy system. Avoid engagement until reinforcements arrive. Once all six fleets are within the system, the test team will separate and rejoin their respective fleets. As I finished the message, I bit my tongue to stop myself from cursing out loud. Nothing kills morale faster than hearing your captain swear up a storm. Well, being selected as a test subject in what could be a very fatal experiment might. I stood up and prepared myself for the announcement I now had to make. Attention, we have been selected as part of a strike team to test the efficacy of the FTLD patch. Our orders are to warp in formation with five other vessels while avoiding engagement until we are reinforced by the rest of the fleet, I said. A grin formed on my face as an idea occurred to me. 
I turned to my XO and asked, Ying, what's our count? 223 corvettes, 118 frigates, 52 destroyers, and seven cruisers, sir. Seven cruisers. The ships in question had belonged to the gaunt insurrectionists, who had built them after capturing a system with shipyards. They'd modeled the design after the U.S. cruiser and quickly found out why the U.S. had stopped making them. Cruisers are larger than destroyers, but much smaller than a battleship. So much smaller that they cannot be fitted with the same shield system or reactor network as a battleship. Which means that while they pack a punch, they've got a glass jaw. Unlike a battleship. A U.S. battleship, at least. Well, I'm certain that the OU has at least one battleship in the system that we're heading to, don't you think? I asked, my grin getting wider. Oh, oh, yes, Captain, I should think so, Ying grinned right back. And we seem to have the advantage of their ship schematics, don't we? We do indeed, sir. I turned to address the rest of my bridge crew. Once upon a time, it was impossible for a destroyer like the Liberty to take down a battleship. The ships on this side of space are built just too damn good. We'd never even make it past their shields, let alone the literal tons of armor plating. I took a step forward. I once believed we'd never get the chance to down one. That changed when I saw the schematics that Intel got for the OU ships. Their battleships are smaller than ours, less armored than ours, and have weaker shields than ours. I tell you, my lovely crew, ever since I saw that Intel file, I've been inspired. I spread my hands and grinned like a madman. I have a dream, a dream of glory, the likes of which no other destroyer has the balls to grasp. A dream of a challenge, the likes of which we may never see again. The crew was on the edge of their seat, smiling wide and waiting for me to say it. My dream is to kill a battleship. This test is a perfect opportunity, don't you think? Yes, sir. We'll have to move fast. We'll warp in formation with the other ships and then warp to the nearest enemy battleship once our weapons charge. I'll take full responsibility, and the Liberty will get her battleship kill, I said, putting my hands behind my back. Aye, aye, sir. I would enjoy helping with your dream, sir, Omega's voice said from my intercom. Negative, Omega. The kill is ours and ours alone. You'll have to find another destroyer to joyride on to get yourself a battleship. Get your electronic ass in that little black box in the drop bay and hold on tight. Aye, aye, sir, Omega said in a distinctly neutral tone. It may seem unfair, but I've never liked our dependence on machines to do our thinking for us especially when it comes to combat. I could tell that Omega didn't wholly disagree with my decision because technically it outranks me and could have ordered me to allow its assistance or told on me to the Admiralty. The mood on the bridge had changed drastically. The pungent air of nervousness had been replaced with the sweet smell of anticipatory impatience. Legs were still pumping and people were still fidgeting, but it was manically instead of listlessly. A certain unique ping sounded the USSS Nidhogg. A few of my senior officers turned to look at me. They were up for captain soon, so I'd taken the liberty of briefing them on the sound. I gave them a grin, which they returned. Gotta give it to the US. They know how to throw a party. A whistle came over the TAC comm, and Admiral Archibald's voice soon followed. Now hear this. Second fleet, prepare to warp on my mark. Prepared to warp, sir, Johnson said. Excellent, warp on the mark, I replied. Mark. The slight lurch and soft tingle of warp enveloped me as I once again took my seat. Prepare to form up once we exit warp, I ordered. Aye, sir. I pulled up the tack map as we exited warp and watched as we took our position. The other ships were along shortly. Power weapons, sir? No, not yet. We don't want to tip our hand. The tack map showed 4,203 ships. They didn't appear to be in any particular formation. I scanned for a nice, isolated battleship. A small bit of dread entered my stomach as I noticed the enemy warp disruptors were active all over the system. An objective marker popped up on the screen. Prepare to warp. Preparing to warp, I, sir, Johnson said. I zoomed in on the objective and nearly jumped with joy. A battleship, isolated from the rest of their ships and with a clear line of sight on where we would be jumping. Command had overlooked it, and I wasn't about to correct them. We've got one. Relaying coordinates, I want to warp to the objective. Go weapons hot and warp to this battleship's stern keel, I ordered. A dick shot, sir, Ying asked with a laugh. 
As my grandmother used to say, if they're above your weight class, go for the grapes. She lived to be 400 years old, so I assume she knew what she was talking about, I replied. We'll need to be fast. Don't want them stealing our joy. Ready for warp, sir. Synchronize and warp on the mark, I ordered. Aye, sir, awaiting mark, Johnson answered. I didn't get to call the shots on this one. That job went to Captain Trex of the USS Idaho. Just as well, if the squad leader went running off, the rest of the squad would be obliged to follow. If I go running off, on the other hand, Trex won't know what to do and will have to make a decision, which will buy me time to get my battleship kill. We've got to make it look justified, as if we spotted the battleship after our warp. Wait for one second after we exit warp before charging the guns, then initiate our own warp. Once we're under the battleship, open up we- Warping, sir, Johnson said. Fuck it, on the fly then. Remember, one second after we exit warp, it should take at least that long for the battleship to spot us. Aye, sir. We exited warp in formation with the other five destroyers. It only took a quarter charge of the FTLD to jump this distance, so we had plenty of juice for an additional warp. One second ticked by and our weapons began to charge. Let's go, I ordered. Entering warp. We exited warp in the perfect position to gut the battleship. Hell, we could probably cut the thing in half at this range if we really wanted to, but we had to be quick so we were playing poke the reactor. Chain guns fire, I ordered quickly, feeling the adrenaline surge in my veins. Chain guns fire, aye, sir. I flicked on the forward cameras to watch the Sabbat rounds fly out of our chain guns at 8,000 rounds per minute. Special cooling systems and exposure to space kept them from melting. Each round slammed into the battleship's shield, weakening it millisecond by millisecond. Max ready, sir. Just a bit more. The enemy battleship noticed us and began to rotate to try to bring their guns around. I had chosen this spot for a very specific reason. The only armaments they had in this location were point defense lasers, which were now bouncing harmlessly off of our shields. Maintain our relative position. Can't let him target us. Liberty, what the fuck are you do? The comms began before I cut them off. Our chain guns kept hammering their shields as our thrusters fired to match their spin. If they had been any smaller, they would have been able to outmaneuver us, but their thrusters were woefully undersized for their mass. I laughed as I watched their shields shimmer and begin to sputter. Mac 1, fire, I ordered through my grin. Mac 1, firing. I watched it fire. The impact was far too much for the weakened shields and armor of the battleship, especially at this range. The ball went deep, but we needed to go deeper. Mac 2, fire. Mac 2, firing. The second Mac fired a round that followed the first. This one faced less resistance on account of the giant hole the first one left, and the bridge crew cheered as our shields flared due to the radiation emitted by the battleship's reactor core detonating. The tack map showed their weapon's signature fade as the last of their power coursed through the ship. Enemy battleship dead in space, sir, Johnson yelled. Ying, what's our count? I asked with a maniacal grin. 223 corvettes, 118 frigates, 52 destroyers, 7 cruisers, and 1 omni-union battleship, sir, Ying shouted back. I allowed a moment of celebration before I said, All right, all right, warp us back to the formation. Aye, aye, sir. We warped back just as the combined fleet joined us in the system. It wasn't long after they warped in that I was proven correct. The battle didn't last long, and we ended up not being a part of it. Once everything was said and done, we rejoined formation with Second Fleet, and I had to explain to Admiral Archibald that I noticed the enemy battleship as we exited warp and engaged immediately, with no time to explain my actions to the rest of the test team. He definitely didn't buy it, but he wasn't about to ream my ass over it. Yet. Instead, he ordered me to rejoin Second Fleet, get my Marines on the ground, and provide orbital support. Enter orbit around planet Alpha at these coordinates, I ordered. Yes, sir. Entering warp, Johnson said, still smiling. Are the Marines packed for their camping trip? I asked Ying. Yes, sir. Snug as a bug in their shuttles awaiting drop, she replied. Well, let's play taxi service, shall we? I said with a smile. Give them the go once we're in position. I found myself in a great mood. The Liberty had a storied history. She had been blessed with bloodthirsty crew after bloodthirsty crew. 
She had faced off against the toughest opponents and destroyed entire squads of pirates and insurrectionists, but never once in her entire history had she been able to bag anything that could be classified as a battleship. Until now.